I'm Harry, and I'm about to turn Christmas sideways. You're listening to Turn Paper Sideways, the podcast where we talk about Christmas and all things festive, from Santa Claus to the birth of Jesus. And on today's very special Christmas episode, I've got a deck tech of my Christmas deck. But before I get into it, let me give you some social media coordinates. You can find us on Twitter at TPSMTG. You can send us an email to turnpapersideways at gmail.com. Send us love mail, hate mail or complaints that you didn't get what you wanted for Christmas. If you'd like to support the podcast, you can go to iTunes or Stitcher or Podbay or wherever you listen to your podcast and give us a five-star rating and a review. And if you really like us, you can go to patreon.com forward slash turnpaper sideways and donate as little as a dollar an episode. And we are really grateful to all of our patrons and there's a whole range of patron rewards there for you to enjoy. So, it's Christmas. This is my favourite time of the year. And how better to celebrate than by brewing a deck specially for Christmas. This is a deck which I've enjoyed playing over the last month in the run up to Christmas and I've had so much fun playing it and I hope you do as well. It's uh, sort of transferable into a non-Christmas deck but there's a whole load of Christmas themed stuff just for fun. So the commanders for this deck are, it's a partner pair, it's Vile Smasher the Fierce and Thrasios Triton Hero. And as much as I try to make my playgroup believe that Vile Smasher is Father Christmas, they still won't believe me, but I hope you'll be convinced. Because Vile Smasher is out to give presents, he's uh, he's checking his list and finding out who's naughty and nice, and to those people who are naughty, he's dishing out presents in the form of damage. And so uh, I chose Vile Smasher, actually partly because of the colours that I wanted, but... I think he makes an excellent Father Christmas for our deck. And Thrasios, I guess, in a way, is uh, like his sort of uh, workshop foreman, making sure that uh, there are enough presents to go round. So Vile Smasher is a legendary creature for one black and red. He's a goblin berserker, he's a 2-3, and whenever you cast your first spell each turn, Vile Smasher the Fierce deals damage equal to that spell's converted mana cost to an opponent chosen at random. Thrasios costs green and a blue for a 1-3 Merfolk Wizard, and his ability is awesome. You can pay 4 colourless mana, or 4 generic mana I should say, uh, to scry one and then reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you put it onto the battlefield tapped, otherwise draw a card. This partner pair are fantastic, uh, it, they're sort of like a real power deck, and um, I know that a lot of people play this as quite a competitive deck. I've sort of tuned it down to make sure it's lots of fun for everybody at the table, and the idea is that Thrasios will help us ramp and uh, make sure that we've got lots of things in our hands to give away. Uh, while Vile Smasher, um, when you cast those things that you're going to give away, is going to deal damage to somebody because they've been a bit naughty. So the Christmas-themed stuff in this deck, this deck is packed full of Christmas-themed stuff, and it wouldn't be Christmas without a Christmas tree. So our first card is Tree of Tales. It's an artefact land, it taps for green mana, that's it. But it's a tree, and so we needed a Christmas tree, uh, so that went in. We needed something to hang on our Christmas tree, so we've got Wayfarer's Bauble. This is a one-mana artefact, and for two you can tap it and sacrifice it to search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle your library. And so we love ramp. This deck really wants to ramp hard, so you can give away even bigger gifts. And uh, on that theme, we've got Santa's Sleigh. This is Cultivator's Caravan. It's a three mana uh, vehicle artifact. It's a five five with crew three, so you can tap any number of creatures with total power three uh, and it becomes a creature until end of turn. But it also taps for one mana of any color, which is super useful in a four color deck. Santa Slay needs, uh, needs a Rudolph at the helm to pull it along and make sure all those gifts get where they need to go. So to play the part of Rudolph, we've got Burnished Heart. Burnished Heart is a 3 mana artifact creature, it's a 2-2, two, two, and for 3 mana you can sacrifice it, search your library for 2 basic land cards, put them onto the battlefield tapped, and shuffle your library. So now we know that the presents are going to get where they need to go, we're going to have enough mana and uh, there's plenty of card draw in the deck to get these presents, but Santa's got to have somewhere to make his presents, so we've got a land called Mishra's Factory. It's a colourless man land, uh, for 2 mana you can make it a 2-2 two, two factory worker till end of turn, and you can tap it to give a factory worker plus one plus one. 
It also taps for uh, Colourless Mana. It's not really very powerful, but it's super flavourful. This is where Santa's going to make his toys. I mean, if you are really going for it, uh, you can get hold of the holiday promo cards. And there is a Mishra's Toy Factory, which is much more on theme. Of course, all of the holiday promo cards are really on theme. They're super flavourful and Christmassy, but... Uh, I haven't got the sort of money to spend on uh, on a whim for a deck which is going to last a month, so I've got Mishra's Factory instead. So now we need to know how we're going to give these gifts. So this deck is all about giving things to our opponents and making them maybe not our opponents, but people who are celebrating Christmas together with us. And so the first way of doing this is Bizarre Trader. It's one and a red for a 1-1 one -one goblin, and you can tap it to give target player control of an artifact, creature, or a land you control. And uh, I've used this recently to give somebody a land um, when they were short on mana and later on given Bizarre Trader to them so that they could give me my land back. And uh, that's the sort of fun table politics that I, I like to try and get going with this deck. It doesn't always work. Not everybody trusts it, especially with Vile Smasher at the helm. But if you manage to convince them that Vile Smasher is really there to give gifts and have a lot of fun, then it can work. Another way of doing it is Harmless Offering. It's a sorcery for two and a red, and it just says target opponent gains control of target permanent you control. And this is sort of a, a one-off. There's loads of ways of recurring instants and sorceries in the deck. It's full of instants and sorceries, so I made sure to include a lot of that. But uh, really, this is just sort of a one-off. This is sort of... Uh, I mean, it's a harmless offering. It's a way of just getting a getting a favour or making sure that somebody doesn't attack you or something like that. The next one is Humble Defector. This is one in a red for a 2-1 human rogue, and you can tap to draw two cards, and target opponent gains control of it. You can activate this ability only during your turn. Uh, I love this card. I think in another deck I might theme it as sort of like the carol singers, going around and giving everybody sort of gifts and Christmas cheer. Um, but in this deck... You know, we're just looking to give our opponents sort of favours and gifts and, and make sure that they get to where they need to in the game. And really, the whole deck is about making sure everybody has a lot of fun. So Humble Defector definitely makes sure of that. Another thing that makes sure of it is Girapur Orrery. It's four mana for an artefact. Each player may play an additional land on each of their turns, so that's ramp for everybody, and uh, people will be very grateful for that. And at the beginning of each player's upkeep, if that player has no cards in hand, that player draws three cards. And so this is like an incentive for people to be playing more. Once their hands are empty, they're going to get lots more cards. And so uh, it sort of incentivizes people to empty their hands and not hold up their answers and their threats for too long, because they're going to get some more later. Howling Mine is another brilliant one. This is a two-mana artifact, and it just says each player draws an extra card during their draw phase. Uh, it only does that if it's untapped, and I have got some shenanigans with this in my artifact deck to make sure it's tapped on my opponent's turns. But in this deck, we're doing no such thing. This deck is all about fun, and so we just want to make sure everybody gets as many cards as they can, and so Howling Mine definitely makes sure of that. Prosperity also does it. It's X and a blue for a sorcery, and it says each player draws X cards. This deck is going to generate a lot of mana. There's a lot of ramp in the deck. Thrasios gets lots of lands onto the battlefield. And so Prosperity gives us a way of using that mana to everybody's advantage. And hopefully a little bit more our advantage because they won't be attacking us too much. And this next card is another way of making sure that we don't get attacked too much. This is Crown of Doom. It's three mana for an artifact. It says whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, it gets plus two, plus zero oh, until end of turn. For two mana... Target player, other than Crown of Doom's owner, gains control of it, and you can activate this ability only during your turn. So you give this to somebody, they can't give it back, and until their turn, everybody who attacks them is going to get buffed up creatures, and uh, I mean, it's a way to make an enemy of somebody at the table, but, you know, Santa's here to decide who's naughty and nice, and maybe the person who's been naughty is going to get this. I don't know about you, but if you've got siblings, I have a younger brother, and I found when I was growing up that all of my best presents suddenly became his best presents because he wanted to play with my stuff rather than with his own stuff. And so to represent that, we've got Desertion. Three blue blue for an instant to counter target spell. If that spell is an artifact or a creature, put it onto the battlefield under your control. And now this is a bit of a mean card and this is where the deck starts to take a slightly meaner turn. And so... 
up until this point we've been gaining favors and making sure that everybody likes us and we're not going to we're not going to draw any hate but this is uh, we play this sort of card when we're ready to enact our real game plan and that is to take everybody's stuff and use it for our own and so desertion is a great way of doing that as is insurrection five red 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 for a sorcery which says untap all creatures and gain control of them until end of turn they gain haste until end of turn so with all this mana and with all these cards that we're giving everybody everybody's going to be playing out lots of big creatures hopefully lots of threats lots of powerful things and insurrection is a great way to take control of all of that and win the game. This is a one card win con and if you play it right you can uh, you can make sure that uh, you get hold of a lot of powerful stuff to turn back at your opponents. And so like I said, this is a deck to make sure that everything is fun, but we also want to win. It's uh, it's definitely fun to win too. So insurrection is a good way of getting there. We've also got reins of power in the deck. Uh, like I said, there aren't many there aren't too many creatures, it's mainly instants and sorceries, and as we've just seen, some artefacts. And uh, Reigns of Power, basically you swap your creatures with an opponent's creatures, and that's another really good way of uh, getting a massive advantage in the game, and uh, possibly even winning. So uh, Reigns of Power is sort of in a similar vein to Insurrection. Memnarch is another one, this is 7 mana for an artefact creature, it's a 4-5, for one blue blue, target permanent becomes an artifact in addition to its other types. Three and a blue, gain control of target artifact. So for seven mana he comes down, for seven mana you can gain control of any permanent on the board. There's also stunt double, three and a blue for a shapeshifter creature. It's got flash and you may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield. And so this doesn't so much steal our opponent's creatures as make sure that we have a copy of that creature as well. There's always something great on the battlefield and this is just going to be the best thing on the battlefield so like i said this deck is uh it's about sharing really sharing's fun we want to we want to share with everybody's toys and play with them but uh, i think really it's sort of like this is where the deck turns a bit nastier another nasty turn the deck can take is that the grinch comes along the Grinch is one of my favourite Christmas films and uh, I do love that it's a, a redemption story and in the end the Grinch sees uh, sees the good in Christmas but I don't think that's going to happen with our Grinch because our Grinch is represented by Vorinclex, Voice of Hunger. Six green green for a legendary Praetor, it's a 7-6 with Trample and it says whenever you tap a land for mana, add one mana to your mana pool of any type that land produced. And whenever an opponent taps a land for mana, that land doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. So this is perfect for the Grinch, because in our deck the Grinch really does steal Christmas. It stops our opponents from doing too much. If they tap their land, they're not going to get it for two turns, but we're going to get twice as much mana. So we're stealing Christmas from our opponents and keeping it all for ourselves. I found while playing this that... Um, I sort of try to make every card Christmassy and some games I sort of make things up on the spot and uh, some things become festive that I never thought could be. I didn't include some of these cards uh, to be festive but when you're deep in the story of your deck uh, all sorts of things can come out. And so one of my favourites is Rampant Growth. It's one and a green for a sorcery. It says search your library for a basic land card and put it into play tapped. Shuffle your library afterwards. And this is Deck the Halls. Deck the Halls with Bowers of Holly or uh, Rampant Growth the Halls with uh, lots of plants and in the form of lands. Uh, similarly, there's Cultivate. It's two and a green for a sorcery. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Reveal those cards. Put one onto the battlefield taps and the other into your hand, then shuffle. And this I saw as uh, making a wreath, making a Christmas wreath to hang on our front door at Christmas. And I'm sure that you can find all sorts of weird ways to make your cards Christmassy. And I've had so much fun playing this deck. And it's it's not very serious. I'm really silly when I'm playing it and coming up with silly story over trying to win. I mean, it turns a bit nasty in places and there are some big cards. I mean, Vile Smash is looking to deal damage. And so there's there's a few sort of classic Vile Smasher things in there, just like big mana cards to uh, to deal that lots of damage when we cast them as the first spell of the turn. Um, and there's plenty of instant speed stuff to make sure we can be dealing damage on everyone else's turns. But over all of that, I'm trying to go with the flavour of Christmas and really make sure that everybody has a lot of fun. And uh, if somebody's behind, I've been donating them lands or, or whatever else. And the intention really is to spread the spirit of Christmas in magic form. So that is the deck. And uh, now 
I think we'd better get on to the news. So for the news this week, Tim has joined us. Welcome back, Tim. Hey, hey. It's so good to be back. This is weird. It's been a long time since I've sat even at this computer um, and I'm glad to be doing this. This is fun. I've I've missed this. <laughs> Great. Oh, I'm thrilled to have you back. How's it going? How's being a dad, etc.? It's it's the just the craziest mixed upest thing ever and it's the best. If you ever thought about doing this, uh, well, no, you should think about it a lot before you do it. But this is a really fun, <laughs> and I'd recommend it to everyone. Um, it's so strange. I have a five-week-old son, and he is the best, and he stares at me. And and my wife says that apparently he doesn't stare at anyone else. And um, when oh, I get home, uh, he's, he's just smitten. staring at me. And, and I, I love him very much, and it's just... oh Well, apparently, words cannot describe. Um, that is how you illustrate that words can't describe because you Brilliant. matter for a minute about not really saying anything <laughs> yeah oh, i'm thrilled i'm so glad i've met Thank him you. he i agree i can attest to the fact that he is awesome yeah uh, he likes you he liked you i know it was good he's i know he didn't say that but because he's you know he was two weeks old but but he liked man. me because i gave him the the down low on on all the all the magic tech he did yeah and I, he now beats me every time we play thanks i made, sh- made sure he knows spells after combat Always bolt the bird, etc. He's better at magic than me yeah, already. He's, he's getting there. <laughs> um, <laughs> since you've been being a dad, have you had any chance to play any magic? Um, I played magic with you a couple of weeks ago. That was a lot of fun with uh, Eamon so and James fun. and Joe. Um, we played some crazy EDH. We played two games. You, uh, Did I win one? I feel like I won one. Yeah, you won with your Fraley stack. It was sick. Oh, yeah. That, it's, it was... It was crazy. That was a, there were a lot of cards on the battlefield and there was not a lot of space on the table. <laughs> it was so much fun because the turn before was my turn and I I splurged out. I was playing Enchantress and I splurged out all of the enchantments under the sun and everyone <laughs> was looking at my board sort of like wide-eyed. What's going on? Uh, how do we deal with this? Um, I guess we'll just have to kill him. That was really interesting. Your playgroup is quite different to my playgroup in that uh, in my group it's... If, if there's a problem, you deal with the problem on the battlefield. Your mm-hmm. playgroup was very much, he's a problem, uh, the solution is player removal rather yeah. than permanent <laughs> removal. That was quite interesting, but they didn't have a chance because the turn afterwards you splurged out all of the elves under the sun and you won in uh, glorious fashion. Uh, it was so good. I kept, I basically, it was really obvious I'd won. I had about 30 elves. They were all very pumped. Um, and I didn't want to just assume, like, I've won should we shuffle up and play again? But, I was, yeah. but no one was saying, um, oh, right, Tim's, was what, Tim's won. They were just looking at me. So I was like, I was going. getting confused. <laughs> I couldn't process everything that was happening. I was I'm very tired. And I was like, uh, um, and, <laughs> baby brain. Um, um, yeah, exactly. And I was thinking, trying to do some maths. And I was thinking, I think I've won, but this is really hard. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was good anyway. It was so good. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so we've got, we've got some news uh, about where Turn Paper Sideways is going in the future and what's happening over the next few weeks. So yeah. the main bit of news is that we are going to have an extended Christmas break. We're going to take um, a chance to rest and uh, not have a, a, a podcast to edit because as much as I love editing it and uh, and thinking up new things to talk about, it's quite a lot of work and it would just be really great to not have that and be able to spend time with family over Christmas. Um, mm-hmm, for we sure. Know- we know that uh, you will be doing the same as well. Um, you already have been for the f- for a few weeks, and that's awesome. Yes, um, and I really appreciate it. I think it's just a really good chance at Christmas just to put things aside and uh, have a, a proper break from everything. So we're going to do that, and um, and then what's what's going to happen in the new year? Well, we're thinking. So we're going to become a not a seasonal podcast, but we're going to go into a season format. So uh, turn paper sideways. This is season one and we're going to have season two and, uh, and it's going to be more cohesive. There's going to be more of a more structured to the season of turn paper sideways and just for better content for you. Yeah. So rather than being sort of like every episode has like its own sort of theme, um, we've done sort of the running theme, particularly with the um, pet cards series we did. Um, I think we'd like to have a bit more of a theme for, you know, like six episodes. And so it'll be like, maybe uh, we're still sort of fine tuning it, but seeing how it will go, 
um, for like six episodes over six weeks and then a six week break and then come back to it, something like that. Yeah. And and each of those six episodes will be sort of tied together in some way. Um, although we're not sure how yet, we're still ironing out the kinks. Yeah. And if you have an idea, if you think you might know what the next Turn Paper Sideways format should be, if you think you maybe know what you did, there's something you'd like us talking about, um, there's something you enjoyed us talking about in this past year and you want us to do that sort of thing again please let us know on twitter um or email and we'll really appreciate that yeah i think that's that's really important we want to make the content that you want to listen to and uh, Mm -hmm. we love talking about uh, you know our favorite things um but they're not everybody's favorite things and so we we really do want to include things that everybody wants to listen to and, and as much uh, interesting content across the board as possible and uh, i'm building a cube at the moment and uh, we're going to venture possibly into canadian highlander and so there might be sort of other sort of formats and topics that we can touch on as well um i'll be quite quite interested in doing that um but we've been podcasting for a whole year uh, we started in January of 2018, and so yeah, pff, I didn't I didn't know that we'd get this far. I didn't expect. I don't know really what I expected. No, I, no, neither did I. We we were started recording about a year ago, didn't we? We recorded we recorded yeah. the first episode about six times, but <laughs> <laughs> secret. <Exactly. laughs> don't tell anyone. Um, but yeah, and it's crazy. I I definitely. Not that I expected to be doing this for a year, because, but I, I definitely wanted to, and I was, I was definitely planning on doing this for a long time, because I, I really enjoy it. I knew I enjoyed it the first time. I knew that was like, oh man, this is really fun. Yeah, and the reason that we've been doing it for so long is because we've had people listening to us. So we are just so grateful to all of you for tuning in uh, every fortnight to listen to us ramble on about one of our favourite topics. Um, we just we wouldn't be doing it if uh, I mean we probably would be doing it without you but it's a lot more fun yeah, because you yes, listen to more it more gratifying so, <laughs> so thank you so much for uh, journeying with us over the last year and uh, putting up with uh, long rants and um, and and also sort of a, a growing production value at the beginning it wasn't uh, it wasn't as good as I think as it is now so uh, thank you no. for putting up with those early episodes which were yeah. full of creaking chairs and uh, static noise and all sorts of stuff but um yeah it's been it's been i don't know about you tim but i've just loved sort of uh exploring the production side and uh planning episodes and things like that yeah i really really have enjoyed it um and on that note um harry may well edit this out but i don't want him to um big thank (laughs) you to harry he has done all the editing uh the lion's share of the planning um this is the, this is a, a joint effort, um, but Harry has definitely been pulling more weight than I have. So massive thank you, Harry. Um, webcam's broken at the moment, so you can't see me, which is making this a little bit easier. So yeah, really appreciate it. Um, Harry's done a fantastic job, and the the amount he's progressed in a year in his editing is amazing. And I've I've really appreciated him doing it because I couldn't have done it. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you for joining me every fortnight to, to chat i thoroughly enjoyed that as well so oh, yeah, I, th- I think that's probably just about the show um so thank you again for listening to this episode uh we wish you a very happy christmas and a very happy new year um if you've got any super sweet christmas cards that i forgot uh, that you think should be included in my Christmas deck, or <laughs> if you want to build your own Christmas deck and you've got a completely different idea for it, please do let us know on Twitter at TPSMTG or send us an email at turnpapersideways at gmail.com. Awesome. Tim, before we go, I've missed asking you this. Is there uh-huh. anything else you'd like to say? Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> Happy I've, New missed, Year and... I've missed I've missed hearing you stumble over it. <laughs> it's always completely we, um... unprepared, and I don't know why you don't think about it in advance. <laughs> <laughs> we had a uh, uh, a Christmas card at work, and uh, inside we all like one of the designers made it, and then um, um, on the inside it said Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. Um, and I was on the phone to uh, a client, and he's very uh, posh. It's a delightful man, um, but I have to be very professional on the phone, and. Uh, he, this was the last time I was going to talk to him before Christmas. He said, oh, I said, Merry Christmas. He said, oh, and a prosperous new year. And I, I thought, oh, 
I didn't know we'd sent our Christmas cards out yet. And I paused for probably about seven seconds. And if you've ever been on the phone to someone and not said anything for seven seconds after they've just said, have a prosperous new year, that's really awkward. And it was, I def- I could feel my face going red. And then I put the phone down. And as always, I turned around and all my colleagues were laughing at me because yeah. I've not got the best <laughs> phone manners. <laughs> and uh, just like that, just just like you stumble on the podcast, you stumbled on the phone. Oh, every time, every single time. And you can't edit phone calls. There's no Harry no. editing while I stay on the phone call. <laughs> you, you guys have no idea how many times I say the same thing over and over again or just say the wrong word entirely. And Harry's like, nope, that's that's not right. That's You just said something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Tim. Anyway, <laughs> should we go? Merry Christmas. And a prosperous new year. <laughs>